My suggestion is once you've merged the image together, it's probably a good idea to make a few additional tweaks. To do this, I'm just going to start by merging all of my layers together and treat it as a single image. If you need to merge non-destructively, you can right-click and convert this to a smart object. And that's fine. That will keep all the layers intact inside. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and press Command or Control E though to merge those together to a single layer. And that works well. Now, I'll convert this for smart filters so that filters are applied non-destructively. Let's take advantage of the Camera Raw filter and redevelop this file a second time. Now, I can go ahead and start to bring out the details. I'll click Auto to start, and that did a nice job, but I just want to lift up the shadows a little bit more and bring out the base exposure slightly. Now, a little bit of clarity and some contrast, actually, and I like where that's going. Let's go ahead and take a side-by-side -side view here, and I'll punch in a little bit, and we can see the change as we work. That's looking good. What I'd like to do though is refine the white balance a little bit. So I'm gonna take the eyedropper here and click on something that should be white. And now it is a pure white, but this doesn't match the environmental lighting. So it actually overcorrected a little bit. This was more of a candlelit scene. So I think that's a bit too far. Let's go ahead and take that back to as shot. But we'll just go ahead and slightly cool that down with a small adjustment manually to get a little bit more of a white tone in the porcelain. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna pop the whites there just a little bit, bring those out, and I'll turn on my clipping indicators here to keep track of any areas that are looking clipped. This helps me judge any potential problems. And what I see here is a need to just back off the exposure slightly to remove those clipped pixels and a little bit of recovery there on the white to bring back some detail so nothing is blown out. All right, that looks good. A little more contrast there. I like that. And a slight boost to the shadows. Now, remember, you can also refine this a little bit using a curve. So I could lift the shadows just a little bit more if needed. I like that, fills it in a bit. And because we brightened up the image, it's gonna need a little boost to color. As you brighten images, they tend to lose color saturation and vibrancy. Now, let's go over to sharpening here. I'll go back to a single view. Let's just set that to the single view and punch in here to 100% so I can really judge things. There we go. Now, what I'm looking for is to make a small adjustment in sharpness. I'll drag the amount slider over and then hold down the Option or Alt key as I adjust the mask so it refines what is sharpened. Now, that's looking better. I'm gonna pop back out, and we have great detail there. Now, this pattern here, this is ancient Chinese teacups. These are very old, so the actual pattern itself on the teacup is not modern day printing. So it's important that you don't worry that this isn't perfectly tack sharp. That's the printing itself. If we look here at the reeds though, we get a better idea of what's happening and this is good so we can adjust the noise and the sharpness so we get the right amount of detail in there. All right, that looks pretty good. And I'm just about done. Let's apply a slight vignette here. We'll pull this down ever so slightly. And then I'm gonna grab the graduated filter here and just drag in this upper corner and lower the exposure slightly to pull down that area just outside. That works well. Let's adjust that. And one new option I really love is that these tools now have the ability to be blended. So we can blend here based upon color. Now let's select that. And what we can do here is actually select with the eyedropper and choose the color of the wood. That helps quite a bit. Now if we look at the mask there, we can better see what's happening and we can adjust the color range so that the mask is more or less affected and that works nicely to darken down that area. All right, let's turn that off. Let's adjust that range there slightly. And we'll just lift the exposure a little bit so it's not quite so aggressive. All right, that looks great. I'll click OK to apply the camera raw filter. That looks great. And what's nice here is you could click right on this mask. So if I got a little bit of overspill here, it's not a big deal. Let's switch to black and a lower opacity brush 
and I can just brush in there right along that edge so it doesn't affect the edge of the desk. That looks great. I'm totally happy with that. We've got great depth in the image here, sharp image from foreground to back, plus a nice color grade to really bring out the emotion of this image. In this case, focus stacking was critical to realize the vision that I had. I first visited this tea house and I loved seeing the row of orderly cups, but in camera, it was an impossible shot to pull off. But thanks to using multiple images and a little bit of Photoshop magic, I got the results that I wanted.